Welcome back to part two of the item database mini series. Last time we created our item class and we also created an item database class to hold all of our items in. This time we're going to create a little bit of a helper class to utilize the functionality and actually gain access to our items. So let's jump straight into it. Now we have our items and our item database. We're going to need a helper script to actually access this information. So we'll create one more script in our scripts folder, C sharp script, and with this one we'll just call database. We'll open this up in Visual Studio again and remove start and update. This script does need to be a mono behavior because we will be attaching it to a, an object in our hierarchy. So what do we want to do first? Well, we only ever want to have one instance of our database active at any given time. So to make sure we only have one, we can make a private database. Sorry, that'll be a private static database and we'll call it instance. Now in a awake function, we can create a singleton. Now, a singleton, like I've just said, is the ability to only have one of these items active in your game at any given time. So to do that, we need to check if our instance is equal to null. Now, if our instance is null, we don't already have a database element in our, in our game. So we'll set instance equal to this and if our instance is not equal to null, we already have one, so we can just simply destroy the game object. Now we want this to persist between scenes. We don't want to have to load in a new instance of the database every time we change scenes. That can just get messy, things can be missed, things can go wrong. Next minute, no more items for your players. So we can use the don't destroy on load and pass in our game object. So that'll make sure that the game object that this script is attached to is never destroyed during a scene transition. Now we need to make sure that our database class has a item database that we just created inside it. We'll just call that items and that'll be populated within the inspector in just a minute. First things first, we'll just create a couple of methods. We'll create a public static, so we can call this method from anywhere else in our project. You know I love doing that. A public static, and we'll return an item, and we'll call it get item by ID. So we'll need to pass in a string of the ID that we want. So now how do we iterate over our item database and find the item that we're looking for? Well, there's two ways of doing this. The first way, we could do a for each loop, and we could do for each item, item in instance.items. Remember, we need to use instance because we are referencing a non-static variable within a static method, but we've already created a static instance of our class. I'll cover that more in detail in another tutorial, but just for now, this is how we're doing it. So, sorry, it's not just items. That's why we need items dot all items, because as you remember in our item database, we have the list of all our items in here. Sorry about that. Right, so for each one of the items, we can check the check if the item dot item ID is equal to the ID that we've just passed, we'll return the item. Now, outside of the for each loop, just in case we've passed in an invalid ID and it didn't find anything to return, we'll just return null. Now that'll work, that's fine. For some instances, that's even more performant than the next method that I'm going to show you. But personally, for a system like this, where you're only going to be doing 
one call every uh, every now and again I prefer an alternate way so we'll just comment that out for a second now to use this second method we need to be using a separate namespace so we're going to be using system dot link which link stands for language integrated query now what link does is amongst other things it gives you access to a set of functions to add functionality when you're iterating over lists if you're sorting lists or even in our case selecting specific items from lists so let's have a look how we do that now we should be able to do everything that we're doing here in our for each statement and the return statement in one line so let's have a go we can return the instance dot items dot all items and this is where link comes in dot first or default now what first or default will do is it lets you pass in a query and it'll either return the first instance that matches true to that query if it doesn't find anything that matches to that query it'll return the default which in this case will be null so we can create i and using our little lambda expression there which is uh, what you need for link we can check if i dot item id is equal to the id that we passed and it's as simple as that so what that's going to do it's going to iterate over our list it's going to check every item in that list and if that items id matches the one that we've passed it's going to return that now if it doesn't find one it'll return default which is null so as you can see this is a lot easier to read than all of this so we'll get rid of that and we're on our way but before we try this out we'll add one more method so we can copy this one we'll rename this to get random item now this may be useful for as i said before you're looting systems you want to have a separate list in this case we're not going to have a separate database we're just going to use the same one but the principle applies you could create a separate database of simple items that are commonly dropped by enemies when killed uh, and then you could just call this function to get a random a random item so to do that again it is instance dot items dot all items and then in this case we'll just grab out of the array a random value between the range of zero and then our instance dot items dot all items dot count so that simple line like i said should just grab a random item from your items database and return it now after all your hard work we'll actually be able to see this in action we pop back over into unity first thing we're going to need to do is on our control object we'll drag our database script oh, we need to unlock the inspector there we go right now we'll drag over the database and we need our item database linked now our item database has all three of our items in there and that should be everything so to test this I already have a little tester script set up we'll open that up and as you can see all it all that I have in here is three text mesh pro UGUI text elements an image element for the sprite and then a string for the search item ID that I want to find in our array and we've also got two methods a get new random item and a get item by ID that are going to be connected to our two corresponding buttons 
So as you can see here, I've already got this set up. All I did was I drag and dropped the item name, description, cost, sprite, and we've got uh, IT0001 in there, which as if you remember is a uh, Apple. So if we just jump back over to Visual Studio, we will create a new method here because we need a way to update our UI. So we'll call it private void set UI. And all we want to do in here is pass an item in, we'll call that I, and then set item name text dot text equal to uh, items name and the same again for the description dot text is equal to i dot item description item cost dot text dot text is equal to i dot item cost now because item costs an integer you're going to get a an exception here but you can either do dot to string which will just make your integer value a string or in this instance because we're using a monetary value I'm just going to append onto the end a G for gold and finally we need item sprite dot sprite is equal to I dot item sprite so now that we have our database item database and item setup uh, tester is almost ready to go all we have to do now is get our items so how do we do that well the way that we can test that it's working is we can call a set UI method now we want to pass an item in here so we can get our database dot get random item simple as that so that will go to the database class call the get random item function which will then return a random item from our items database as simple as that and similarly for the get item by id we can just call a set ui and this time we'll get database dot get item by id and here we can just pass in our search item id that we've populated in the inspector obviously this is just for testing purposes in your game you would for example kill the enemy you'd have a pop-up on screen which would want to show an item that the enemy's dropped this way you can just set the ui elements using either a valid item ID or else a random ID so let's see this working then shall we let's pop back over to unity everything should be in place our search item is IT01 which we know is our Apple so let's play it and hope for the best so first things first we'll get a new random ID uh, a new random item sorry and you can see we've got the card, 25 gold. This is the Ace of Hearts and our sprite. Click again and we get an apple. Ace of Hearts. Come on. There it is, portion. That's what we were waiting for. There we go. And now if we get new item by ID, we can force the apple every time. And if we change in our inspector, IT02, we see now we get the Ace of Hearts. That's how simple it is. Finally, just to cover all bases, what we can do in our set UI, we can do a check that I is equal to null. Now, if item is equal to null, we're not going to be able to get any of these elements from null. So we'll just take those, and for now, we'll just throw out error 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 and return if it's not null it'll then populate the items so we can just see that if we play the game 
and we throw in item 04. We know we don't have an 04. So we get the item by ID and we see we get the errors. You could do this through debug.log. You could do um, a default item to make sure that regardless of what happens, your player will always get an apple if an error occurs, for example. Uh, I'll leave that down to you, just showing you that this is the way that you can deal with an invalid item ID for whatever reason. And in a nutshell, that's it. That's how simple it is to have a generic database functionality without using a database. What we could do in a database script, we could create external reference, oh, sorry, extra references to additional databases. Um, I'll, I'll throw together a little example and uh, I'll, be, be, I'll be back with you in a minute. And just like that, we now have a second database for weapons. We have one weapon, a sword. We've given it the ID, WEA0001. Again, that can be anything you want. Called it a sword and giving it 50 damage. So just as a quick overview, what we did, we created a new weapon database. We created a new weapon class. Both of these are... Uh, inherited from scriptable object and in our database class we added a reference to our new weapons database and basically just duplicated the two methods we've already done but in this instance we now return a random weapon or a weapon based on its string id and with that i think we're done so, I hope you've learned something today. This can be quite useful in the right hands. I use it in most, if not all, of my games. I always have at least one database active at once. Uh, so, if you've enjoyed it, please subscribe. I do try to post on a weekly basis. Um, also, you can find us on uh, Facebook and Instagram. That'll be comp3.interactive on both platforms. And I hope to see you again very soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.